What is going on guys? Welcome to this Python tutorial series for machine learning. In today's episode we're going to talk about the decision tree classifier and also about the random forest classifier. So let us get into the explanation. So let us start by defining what a decision tree is and how it works. Now imagine we have some person called Mark and Mark has a decision to make. Uh, and this decision is, is he going out in nature today or not? So this is the question. Uh, Let's just say this is nature question mark. Is he going out into nature? And uh, we have to predict his decision that he's going to make. And for that, we have historical data. So we have a bunch of data points here. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Multiple historical events in which he either did go out into nature or not. So we have a bunch of yeses and noes and yeses again and so on. We have uh, cases in which he did go out into nature and cases in which he did not go out into nature. Uh, and we have also some parameters for that. So for example, we have data on if this day was a sunny day or not, or if uh, this day was windy or not, if it was raining or not, and also if he was alone or not. So uh, one of the criteria is maybe, is he going alone into nature or is someone going with him? And we have a bunch of different um, parameters that we can look at, and then we have the decisions. For example, he went out into nature, it was sunny, it was not windy, it was not rainy, but he was alone. Oh, actually, this is a yes then. He was alone. Uh, then he also went out when it was windy, not raining, and he wasn't alone. Then there was a, way, uh, a day which was not sunny, very windy very rainy, and he was also alone, so he didn't go. And what we have is we have this data set of events of did he go out or not. And what we try to do now is we try to build a model, a decision tree model, that predicts the right uh, answer. So what we do is we give that decision tree uh, the data if the day is sunny, if it's windy, rainy, if he's alone, and other parameters in the decision tree in the end uh, ends up with a classification, which is yes or no. Is he going out or not? So let's look at what a decision tree like this would look like. Um, basically, it would have a root if the decision tree is already trained. We would have a root that goes off into two branches. And these branches could be uh, it's sunny or not sunny. And then we have another point here. The next question is, uh, does it rain? question mark and we could say yes it rains or no it doesn't rain and if it's not sunny also we can ask does it rain we can get a no and a yes and then we could have the question of is it windy then we could again get yes and no we could also have windy in every other branch or maybe it's obvious to the decision tree that if it rains I'm not going anyway or he's not going anyway so I don't even have to check for anything else. We have a decision tree that we just have to answer a couple of yes and no questions, uh, or actually it doesn't have to be yes or no. We could also answer uh, sunny, windy, cloudy, whatever, if we have multiple options, not only binary options. Uh, we just answer some questions, and in the end, we end up with an answer that is either yes or no, or it also could be in the example of the breast cancer data set, malignant or benign. Uh, or actually, we could also have uh, three different classes, so it doesn't have to be limited to just two. Uh, but basically, this is uh, how the decision tree works once it's trained. So the question remains, how do we train that model, or how is that model being trained in uh, Python, for example? Now, what we do in the beginning is we define a root node, and this root node asks one question. So it is a random question. We choose a random feature, for example, sunny, rainy, or is he alone? And then we split up the possibilities into different branches. So for example, the first question might be, is it sunny or not? And then I can get either a yes or a no. So yes or no. Of course, if I have a column or a feature that has multiple options, not only two, uh, I can also uh, have three or four or five branches or 10,000 branches. So I could say sunny yes, sunny no, or I could generally ask for the weather and then I could say sunny, rainy, or whatever. And I can have like five possibilities here. 
Uh, then what I do is I have the data set or we have the data set from the beginning where we have all these columns basically. And we had the columns sunny and rainy and alone. And then we had a conclusion if he's going or not. And what we're doing now is we're splitting up the data set. So I have uh, a bunch of yeses here in the sunny column and a bunch of noes. And what I now do is I get all the yeses on the right side. So I get all the rows that have a yes on sunny on the right side and all the noes on the left side. Uh, and what I do now is I check for how many of the right side, how many of the data rows here on the right end up being a yes or a no. Finally, in the final answer, is he going out or not? And then I keep track of that number. For example, uh, in, in this data set, it might be the case that he always goes out when it's sunny. In this case, I would get, for example, I don't know, 85 yeses and zero noes. And if this is the case, what I can do is I can already say, if it's sunny, the decision tree ends here and I give you a final yes prediction because I don't have to check if it's rainy or if he's going alone. If, it, if it's sunny, he always goes. So this is at least what the data set tells us. Um, whereas if it's not sunny, I have, uh, for example, 30 yeses and 55 noes. Uh, actually, it's... It's a coincidence that they both add up to 85. It doesn't have to be the same number. We could also have uh, 200 examples here and 85 here, it doesn't matter. But in this case, we have 85, 85. Uh, and if it's, not, um, if it's not obvious here, I can ask the, next, uh, the next question. So I could say, is it rainy or not? Does it rain or not? And then I could split it up again. So I would get again, yes and not. And all the data rows that have a no in sunny and a yes in rain end up being here, and all which have a no in sunny and no in rain end up being here. And then again, I look at the data and I say, okay, if it's not sunny and raining, he has, I don't know, uh, 40 no's and zero yeses. So here I could end and say he's not going. Okay, but if it's not sunny and not raining, I can ask, if, is he going alone? And then split the tree up uh, even more. So in the end, I would end up with a model that is somewhat trained. So this is what the algorithm then does. It takes the data and optimizes the decision tree. But of course, we have a random factor here because which question or which feature do we start with? I could start with sunny, uh, I can start with rain, and of course, uh, the tree varies uh, enormously because if I start with rainy, not every time when it rains, uh, is he not going? So, so I could check for rain, get a yes, and then I would have to check for sunny. Uh, and even if I get a no in rain, I would have to check for sunny. Whereas if I start checking sunny, checking for sunny, sorry, I end up with a yes immediately. So it's not, um, it's not the same uh, which feature you start with. So it, it makes a difference, that's what I'm saying. So uh, this is a random tree and you can have multiple trees with different outcomes or different efficiency, basically. But this is how a basic tree is trained. And now this is where random forest classification comes into play, because a decision tree might be kind of random because of the order of the features. So if I have a data set with 50 or 100 features, the order of features chosen is uh, very important, and it might lead to uh, huge differences in the output. So one decision tree might give me a yes, another one might give me a no, just because uh, the order of the features was picked differently. So what I could do and what I do with the random forest classification is I create multiple decision trees, not only one, but maybe 50 or 100 or 200 decision trees, and I train all of them on the same data. So this is our data. And I feed this data into all these different decision trees in the forest. So a forest is made up of multiple trees. And I have all these decision trees trained on the same data. And what I do in the end is I get a new test example and I want to know what the answer would be. So I feed the test example into all of these, into each of these decision trees. And they will all give me an output. So this one might say, yes, he's going out. This one also says, yes, he's going out. This one also says, yes, but this one says no. So of course, the collective result of the forest would be yes. So I have three against one, it would be yes. 
And of course, if I have 50 trees, it would be something like 44 against 6, for example. Uh, and I get a yes. Or sometimes it may be not that clear, but basically I train multiple trees to have uh, different opinions, more or less, on the same issue. Um, and the advantage of that is, of course, that the, I, I minimize the risk of a misclassification because if for some reason I end up with only this decision tree here, I get a no, even though most other decision trees would end up with a yes. So a random forest basically uh, uses a democratic system of uh, classification with multiple decision trees. So let's look at the implementation in Python once again. And uh, this is the code from the last video. And we're not going to add too much new stuff. We're just going to use uh, two more classifiers. So the focus of these initial episodes is to get to know as many uh, algorithms and classifications and regressions as possible. And later on, we're getting into some deeper topics. But for now, we're just going to test different models to explain how they work. And for this reason, we're going to just import from sklearn dot um, tree, I think. Yes, from sklearn dot tree, import decision tree classifier. We can also have a regressor if we want to do regression, of course. And we're going to import from sklearn dot uh, wasn't forest, what was it? Dot ensemble, I think. Import random forest classifier. Yes, or also regressor if you want. So from sklearn.tree, import decision tree classifier from sklearn.ensemble, import uh, random forest classifier. And what we're going to do now is we're going to define a third classifier equals decision tree classifier. And we're going to fit that classifier on the training data, x train and y train and then we're also going to define a fourth classifier which is the random forest classifier uh, let's look at the parameters here yeah we can also define how many samples we want to allow how deep it should go and so on we're going to leave the default values so classifier four dot fit x train and y train and we can now print and compare the results so we're going to say this is the decision tree classifier dtc and the random forest classifier and here we say clf3 and clf4.score so let's see how the models perform maybe they outperform the support vector machine i don't think so to be honest but let's check out. Um, so in this case, the random forest classification is as good as the K neighbors classification. And they're both better than the support vector machine and the decision tree classifier. Let's see what happens if I run this again. We end up with nothing. <laughs> Takes a while. Is it laggy or something? Let's run this again. Oh, there we go. Uh, in this case, the support vector machine was had a 97% uh, accuracy. The decision tree classifier had 99%, which is very accurate. If you think about uh, breast cancer data, this is this is crazily accurate. So, uh, and also the random forest classification has 96. But of course, we had one decision tree that was 99% uh, accurate. Sorry. So. It's also a little bit of a random factor in there. But you can see that on average, we have the same performance. So the decision tree maybe is not that accurate, except for this one case where it had 99%. Uh, random forest though is pretty accurate most of the time. So this should be a good algorithm for this data set. But most of the time, the support vector classifier is the way to go, I think. But let's see one more time. Yeah, most of the time the SVC outperforms the other models, but the random forest classification is also a pretty good one. So nice. 
So that's it for the decision tree classifier and the random forest classification. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit the like button to support this channel. And of course, feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more future videos for free. And yeah, that's basically it. So thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.